Thanks for downloading the EV Shadow Catcher with Reflections material from 3dillusions.co.uk. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use it. So the first thing we'll need to do is create a Shadow Catcher plane. So mesh and then plane, and then we'll scale that up a bit and we'll add something for it to reflect. So we're going to add a monkey and I'll move him up a little bit, maybe scale him down. Okay, so what we also need to do is bring in the data that you've downloaded. So the first thing is the world. So file, append, and we need to navigate to the blend file you've downloaded. So EV Shadow Catcher with Reflection, a blend file, uh, a pen file rather. Double click that, go into the world folder and we'll bring the world in. And now in the shader editor, in the world mode, we need to use this world. So EV Shadow Catcher world is now in the list. If we click on this, then that will activate it. Okay, and let's just have a quick look at what this does. So it's the same as any world, but the difference is we've got these two additional nodes. And basically, these are to make sure that the HDRI doesn't affect the lighting of the 3D object. Because the problem with EV is the HDRI doesn't cast shadows. So if it's lighting the scene, but casting shadows, uh, but not casting shadows rather, then it's a very odd result. And it also means that this doesn't actually work properly. So let's come back out of there. The next thing we need to do is add the shadow catcher material to the plane. So we're going to file, append, and we'll go up one folder. So we're still in that same blend file and we're going to go into the material folder and bring in the EV shadow catcher. And we'll select the plane in the shader editor, this time for the objects, we'll go to the drop down and we'll choose the EV shadow catcher, uh, which is this one. We're not getting any brightness on this at the moment, and that's because obviously we don't have any lights. So let's go into add a light. So Shift A, light, and then sunlight. And now you can see we're getting the nice shadow from uh, cast from the light. If I rotate the light now, we can con uh, control the uh, direction of that shadow. So maybe somewhere like that. To make sure you get nice soft shadows, go into the render settings, just tick soft shadows under the soft shadow section. And to control how strong that shadow is, how soft it is rather, in the lights settings, you've got the angle if I change that to 10, or maybe, yeah, 10, you can see we're getting a very soft fall off. If I change it to one or zero, then it's a completely harsh edge. So I'm gonna change that to five. Okay, so at this point, it's a good idea to change the light to whatever you want. And then once you've got that, how you like it, you can now control the brightness of the plane. So we'll click on the plane, and then we'll bring up the material. What we need to do is just turn overlays off so we can see the edge. We need to change the brightness of the of the uh, material until it fits in properly with the background. So I'm going to increase the brightness, making sure I've got the reflection strength turned all the way off. i increase that brightness until you can't see it, somewhere about there. And now we're left with just the uh, shadow and the rest is transparent. So we can control the, the transparency of the shadow with the shadow transparency setting. So if I increase that, you'll see the shadow becomes less visible. The problem is it will also uh, affect the brightness of the plane. So we'll just need to just turn that back up a little bit. And there we're getting the more transparent shadows and we're also uh, not seeing the edge of the plane. So the next thing, we'll turn on reflections. So let's turn reflection strength up to something like 10. And you can see we're getting a very strong reflection there. But the problem is we can see the edges of the plane now. So we need to control that. And that's what the reflection distance is for. So if I turn the reflection distance down, so I'm holding shift and I'm bringing that in. And you can see it controls how far uh, the reflections appear on the shadow catcher. And we can control the fall off. So if it's a very harsh edge, using the reflection fall off parameter here. So if I turn this up, you can see we're getting a much softer edge and it makes it much less obvious. So let's just turn that back up temporarily. I'll increase the distance somewhere about there. 
It's a good idea, obviously, to make sure that the plane is quite large. So I'm going to scale that up. There we are. So the plane is larger than the uh, fall off distance. Okay, so you can see we're getting reflections for the HDRI. So if I turn that strength all the way down, we're getting no reflections. Turn it up, we're getting reflections, but we're not getting any reflections from the actual 3D geometry from Suzanne. And the reason for this is we also need to add a shift A, light probe, and then a reflection plane. So click on reflection plane, and then you can see straight away we're getting the actual reflections. But we need to make sure that reflection plane is large enough. So I'll just go into overlays, and then if we increase that somewhere around about there, so it's at least you know, somewhere about the same size as the actual reflection uh, shadow catcher plane that we've got. That's fine, and we'll turn that off. And now we're getting the reflection and the shadow. Okay. And the only thing left to do now, if you click on this, we may need to alter the brightness. Again, that looks pretty good. Okay, so that's fine. And the more of an angle we come to like this, then you can see we're losing the reflection here. So if you are going to go at a low angle, then all you need to do is just incre increase that reflection distance a little bit, and then maybe increase the fall off as well. And then set it up at this sort of angle, whichever lowest angle you're going to be at, and then that'll work for all scenes. Okay. Uh, if you find that the reflection is going too far, for example, if it's going over parts that you don't want to be reflected, then you can either change the 3D geometry so that it matches the edge, or you can just tweak. For example, there you can see it's the reflection is on her legs. So what I would do is I would just use the reflection distance and bring it in a little bit until it's about the right place, about there. And then I'm getting the reflections just where I want them. And additionally, the last option we've got is the reflection roughness, which obviously we can just increase the roughness of the uh, material. And that's just to match if the uh, HDRI is rough itself. There we go. And that's it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.